Pro Tools has two main windows. The edit window shows the timeline and all the tracks, and the audio and MIDI clips, and naturally is where all editing and arranging takes place. The mix window shows the corresponding channel strips for each track, including all processing and routing, and of course is where mixing is normally done. Now, it is possible to also display sections of the channel strips in the edit window as well, to facilitate making mix-related adjustments while in the tracking and editing stages of production. I'll look at that in a later video. But once the project has reached the mix stage, the mix window is the place to be. The mixer you see in a Pro Tools session is usually customized for that session, though many engineers create mixer templates to use as a starting point. A typical mixer panel consists of a number of channel strips, one for each track, as well as additional strips for extra signal routing. There's always a master fader channel strip. All the outputs from all the other channel strips feed into the master fader when the finished mix is bounced down to a master stereo mix audio file. That file contains the output of the master fader, which in turn includes all the tracks in the mixer, both audio and MIDI tracks, and extra auxiliary channels. Now, if you're up to the mix stage of production, you're probably familiar with at least some of the different types of channel strips, but to be thorough, I'll cover them all. There are several types of channel strips in Pro Tools. You'll choose among them when setting up a new mixer. The basic channel strips, the ones that correspond to the recordings that'll be tracked for the project, are audio channels and MIDI or instrument channels. All of these can be mono or stereo, though some versions of Pro Tools can handle multi-channel as well. Audio channels will handle the individual audio recordings, the individual audio files created for the project. MIDI and instrument channels handle MIDI recordings. MIDI channels are mostly for MIDI data recordings that'll be used to trigger an external hardware electronic instrument. They pass no audio, so they're not really part of the mix once they've been set up. Instrument tracks also contain MIDI data recordings, but they include virtual instrument plugins, so they do pass audio and will be used to mix and process the audio from those virtual instruments. Auxiliary, or aux channels, are for audio signals that are routed from somewhere else in the mixer. For example, the MIDI data from a performance recorded on a MIDI track would be sent out to trigger an external hardware synth or sampler, and the audio from that instrument would be returned to the Pro Tools mixer via an aux channel. Probably the most common use of an aux channel is for a reverb plugin. To allow many tracks to add different amounts of the same reverb, the reverb plugin is opened in an aux, and signals from the other tracks are routed into it. This standard send and return hookup will be covered in detail in a later video. As I said a minute ago, the master fader is the final destination for the audio from all the other channel strips in the mixer. This is where all the tracks and auxiliary audio signals are mixed down to. What you see and hear here is what you get when you bounce down to the final master stereo mix audio file at the end of the mix stage. I'll quickly create a new mix panel from scratch using the new tracks dialog. On Mac, the shortcut is shift command N. I'll add several mono and stereo audio tracks, a couple of instrument tracks, several mono and stereo auxes, and a master fader. As you can see, the plus button lets you add a new category to the list of tracks to be created. For those in a real hurry, there are shortcuts for all these actions if you care to take the time to learn them. Once the channel strips have been added to the session, they can be renamed and moved to any desired position in the virtual mixer. They can also be hidden. A click on the small arrow at the lower left opens the tracks list, where you can hide tracks visually, either via a right click on the selected tracks or by clicking on their buttons. But watch out, hidden tracks will still be active and they'll still play unless muted. You can also make a track inactive, which saves on CPU draw. These functions can also be addressed with a right click on the track's name in the mixer panel itself. Sharp eyed viewers probably noticed the groups section at the bottom. I'll cover that in a later video. I'll go through the main components of the individual channel strips and signal flow in the mixer, initially within the channel strips themselves, in the next video.